Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first tutorial on texturing. I do not have a microphone. So this is what we're going to be making today. We're going to be talking about our um, realistic, metallic, organic texture that we've built here. Um, just to give a little bit of pop and flair to your designs. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is um, select it and delete it and open up Crazy Bump. What is Crazy Bump? Crazy Bump is a program that you can get for free offline and build your own textures. You can separate them into uh, diffusion maps, normal maps, occlusion maps, specularity maps, etc, 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 whatever you may need. So in our project file we have three lights. We have a camera, we have our Element 3D uh, layer, our vignette, and our background. Um, let's talk about our lighting real quick. I just have two point lights and a spotlight. Spotlight giving a little bit of a uh, atmospheric feel from the top. If I turn that off, you'll see that it gives just like a little bit of pop. Um, and then I'll turn the other two off and you see that you can create some different uh, atmospheric emotional ties to this geometry rather than it just being plain and bleh! Because it looks gross without lighting. Because lighting makes it perfect. That is one of the keys to this texture. Anyway, um, opening up the Element 3D uh, panel, we have a lot of things that we need to break down. <clears throat> but let's just go ahead and talk about the texture in this uh, tutorial. So I don't make it too long and crazy. If we open it up, we have our geometry in there and we have our texture applied to it. So in our texture, you see diffusion, glossiness, reflectivity, illumination, normal, bump, uh, occlusion, and environment. Those are our primary textural maps. And uh, we're doing something unique with one of them, the reflectivity map, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But for now, first off, we want to set our environment map, and that is the ENV map that I've created. You can use whatever you want, but I used um, in my tutorial textures, which will be available in the link or in the de description down below. The link in the description, you can download everything. Great, here you go. Free for you. Um, you can get the organic metal environment. You select that texture and it'll automatically apply. Don't have to touch any other, of the other settings and it will just give that nice golden hue. Because if I turn off the environment or I made it some other shape or other texture, right? Let's go to the one of the video co-pilot ones, right? This little shirt, that'll do, right? Oh, it's a totally different effect. It's like silver, ah. Oh. That's pretty cool, right? It just gives the, the lighting hue that you want. This is honestly pretty awesome as well. Um, but I wanna change it back to my tutorial lighting <clears throat> for now. Yes, my birds are in the background. No, we are not doing vegetables. Fingers, do what I ask you to do. Tutorial textures, eh, eh. There, got it. Back to gold, all right. So now that we've got our environment set up, let me just shut off each of these and show you um, what it looks like basic. Because what I did, and I'll start this over from scratch, um, is I went to physical settings. Usually I have a Chrome, but we're gonna go. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna build it completely from scratch. So I'll take this default um, texture and I'll apply it to a couple of these just so that we kind of have a reference. And I'll turn the other ones on so that we have something to judge against. <clears throat> our new created ones from scratch and we'll go ahead and open up our default selected um, blah, 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 texture in the diffusion settings what we want to do is we want to open our texture uh, tutorial textures file <clears throat> and select the displacement one which is actually not a, a a usual map that you use for the color and the like design and everything but we'll go ahead and pull that in uh, for that using it in different intended purposes to get unique artistic results <clears throat> so now we've got this little interesting thing and you can you can shape it and move it however you want in order to get this line out of there but I didn't really bother with it um, for now and then <clears throat> you want your uh, diffusion settings to be about 0.37 just so it gives a little bit, but it doesn't carry over all of the material presets once we get them all layered. 
Um, <clears throat> with reflectivity, you open it up and we'll go ahead and load our um, REF, organic metal REF, which has an actual texture. And this is unique because we're taking a texture and we're gonna reflect map it onto this texture. And it will pull from the diffusion texture in order to create somewhat of a hybrid texture. So we're getting a little bit unique because we want the, the, the ambiance of the environment map, which is one texture, the um, backbone of the diffusion map, and then the overarching uh, reflectivity map to kind of catch all of those um, textures. So I put that in and nothing will happen yet because we don't have any of our reflection settings up. But as we increase it and put it to about 75, you can see that something is happening, right? Let's actually go all the way to 100, that'll be good. Um, and then we'll drop our glossiness to about 75% and that gives us a little bit more catch in the lighting. And you'll notice that we have one more issue that we have to address is that it's like, why does it look so pale and like faded? That is because of the diffusion color, which we have to drop down to a more darker tone. And as you can see, immediately it's very close to our final product. Um, there's only one more aspect missing, or lot, rather two aspects missing. Um, but we can do the normal bump map, which we can pull from our um, file that's available in the description, just again a reminder. Uh, and we'll pull our normal map put it in and whoa chunky gross yuck we don't like it so we'll just drop the amount that is applied to a peaceful nice you know amount uh, that's up to your artistic eye how much you want if you want it to be like super gritty and like ridiculous go for it that's all you um, but I'm gonna just keep it at a nice like 18% that's pretty solid right there and then the last one that we can add um, and this will change it a little bit, but you can add this in um, just for a little bit of a uh, little bit more depth. You get the occlusion map, um, which will come into play later when we add our occlusion settings in the render options. So we'll go ahead and add that in for now, and we'll double check down here that everything's set. The AO amount uh, mode is on, and the amount is set to one. We'll go ahead and go OK. And you'll notice that it's a little bit more bright, a little similar, but it's not exactly the same. And what we want to do is go into our render settings here and make sure that we're set to um, SSAO, which is like scene select ambient occlusion or something like that along those lines. And you'll drag the intensity up to about 25, which will be awesome. And that'll bring you to uh, roughly the right texture type. And then it just becomes tweaking to your own preferences where I can like go in and I can say okay let me make this uh, a little bit darker and let me balance out the reflectivity make that about 82 let me do you know that's if you wanted to make it illuminating for some reason that's another technique that you can do if you wanted to have like these illuminated cracks in there that could be something that you could pull in, but that's another tutorial for another day. Let's talk about what we're talking about. Um, so I bring that in. You see how it just darkens a little bit and matches the quality. And we have our final product. So real quick, with the ambient occlusion texture input and everything, uh, with it set at about 25 to 0.7 or so, I just want to show you real quick what that does if I drag it down to maybe like 5%. You just check that out. Check that out. That's a, uh, that's a, uh, yuck. It's uh, pretty unrealistic. It doesn't have any kind of um, depth to it, but um, adding that 25.7% uh, ambient occlusion with the ambient occlusion map that we put in to pull from, it just gives that little bit of depth and uh, the dirt and grime that gets in between the chain links. It gives a little bit of that illusion. So the position settings and the Y rotation, um, which controls basically how it moves. Um, if we do both of these, um, let me turn off the twist settings for a second. If we do just both of these, basically what happens is it just rotates together because it, it rotates the Y setting 
Um, and then the position moves it simply up and down. So this moves it up and down. So I just keyframed um, where I wanted it to start, keyframed where I wanted it to end, and then I just looped it back. And so after that, it wasn't really selling and I just wanted to give it something that would give it a little bit of a kick. You know, something that would like kind of draw your eye, just like play a little bit of an illusion on your mind to think that it's twisting and they're all interacting together. And in a very quick way, we can do that with the twist effect, which um, you can find down here in the uh, deform settings and then you can find twist. And you just enable and then enable and both of them will be set up for your animation. So um, I keyframe at zero the X twist, and I twisted it at the X axis. You might have to figure around, fiddle around to figure out which one it does. And it applies to all of them, so be careful with that when you're animating multiple pieces. You probably want to do that in the multi-object settings. You can enable that, and it'll give you a whole lot more functions, and then you can go on your business animating from there. But for now, I just wanted all of them to rotate together in kind of like a twisty way. And so I applied it to the X axis. And then I twisted it about 30%, which just gives this little hint of a like S curve in the actual geometry, um, which as it moves, gives you a nice rotational feel. And then it swivels back and as it finishes its animation, it comes back to the regular uh, undeformed geometry. And that just gives you a hint of motion that I don't think you would get from the robotic stable uh, or the robotic basic movements that come with the general position and rotation settings. You can just get a little bit of uh, fluidity and life to your animations with some of the deformed settings. If you, and a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to use a ton. So that's basically it guys. Hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on textures and how to basically make this uh, metallic rotating chain link with animations. Again, it's uh, available down in the description. Just go ahead and download it and use it for whatever you want.